So you guys keep asking about it. Let's go over what I use for stripping. Now, what I use is this stuff here called Cooper Strip Club. I know, funny name, great product. Um, and then this is like your neutralizer or what they call flusher. Essentially, you just use that to get that off. Um, yeah, this, this stuff's pretty good too. Um, they both work really well. Um, and basically after you're done using this stuff, you don't have to sand the wood. It does not raise the grain at all, so it makes my life real easy. Um, now, as you can see, this is the, the stripper in this spray bottle. It's really thin and you actually just spray it on like this. And same thing with flusher, really thin. Just spray it on after you're done stripping, get all the, the finish off. Um, and so these are kind of the little tools I use. I use these little wood scrapers. Um, dental pick, super important. Uh, I use these little brass brushes. I like these a lot. However, I don't use any of these tools with a lot of pressure. Just kind of, if I'm picking at things, use that. This is just for scraping the stuff off the top. Again, I'm using almost no pressure when I do that because I'm not scratching or really scraping the wood. I'm just helping the stuff off. It almost falls off once you get it on there for long enough. Uh, these are little nylon brushes. This ones are a little dirty. I try to make them last as long as possible. Lots and lots of steel wool. Don't go super coarse with this stuff because again, you're not trying to sand the wood. You're just trying to get the, the stuff that's really hanging on there a bit off. And then I typically use these little like 3M scuff pads. This is a normal 3M one. These ones Kim got from her work, so they were free. <laughs> so good on her. Thank you, Kim. Um, and essentially, yeah, these you can uh, help get the, uh, so essentially these scuff pads here, I just simply use them with the uh, flusher as kind of like the final wash and rinse, just to make for sure every last little bit of the stripper's off and every last little bit of the uh, shellac is off, in this case, or paint on like the trim work. So let me set my camera up and I'll show you guys how I do this. So starting off here, you guys can see that spot's stripped, that spot's not, that's what we gotta get to today. Uh, along with the ornamentation and all that, that was my little test patch I did. So all you do to start the process off is spray a little bit of this stuff. So I just filled this bottle up, so give it a second. There we go. So all we're gonna do, is spray a nice layer on. And essentially, just give it a few minutes for it to do its work. Um, with certain paints, it takes longer. I've noticed in the bathroom, for instance, at this place, that the, uh, the stuff takes a little bit extra time um, because I think that, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what kind of paint it is, but it's, uh, it's a little harder to get off. Some of the other areas, I wait about 10 minutes. In the bathroom, I wait about 20 minutes for this stuff. Here with this, uh, this varnish, whatever it is, it's about a three minute thing. So it starts melting almost right away. Um, and then essentially I get the little scraper out and uh, start pulling the stuff off. So I'll be back with you guys with that step. So here at the bar back at the same spot guys. And I'm gonna show you how to start the process with this. So essentially we're just going across pretty gently and just start pulling the stuff off. Essentially just kind of pulling across and pulling the stuff with it. That sound it sounds a bit more like I'm scraping. I'm not actually putting a lot of pressure, but because this stuff is so lifted up, it sounds a little crazy, but you can see, I mean, I'm just touching it and it's essentially just coming right off. So, just keep going, pulling it on through. You can see this stuff is really gunky, quite gross. So let me uh, get a little further along with this and I'll bring you guys back because this is really hard to do one-handed. So back here about five minutes later and you can see I've got most of the stuff off, got some drips and stuff going on. But essentially after the scraper has done its thing and I've done this a little bit on here already just to get some of the stuff out of my way. Um, but really it's simple. Take a paper towel and just wipe it off. Some of the stuff that's a bit more stubborn, as you can see, um, just hit it once again. If you know, the idea kind of here is to keep this stuff pretty wet with with the stripper. You don't need a whole lot of it. 
just to kind of keep it wet, mist it a little. And then right away, go back at it and wipe it again. You can see that's coming off quite nicely. See? So basically, I just do that a few times until I've got most everything off the surface. And then I go in with the steel wool. So, I mean, as you can see, yeah, just at, at wiping at it, the stuff basically just dissolves right off of it. Uh, same thing with these little ornate details. These corners are a bit harder to get into, of course, but uh, that's where the little brushes come in. So let me get uh, grab some steel wool and we'll be right back. Next thing, take a little piece of steel wool. You can see I ripped it off of the top of this guy. Don't use the whole chunk or else you'll end up wasting a lot because you'll make everything really dirty. But you see how that patch there is a lot lighter? That's that test patch. That's because essentially what I was doing with the paper towels and stuff is kind of just pushing some of this stuff on the surface around. Now I want to get it out of the surface and that's why we use this. So just like anything else, just kind of sand it away, if you will. Not pressing hard, not doing, going too crazy. But you're just getting that stuff that's on the surface out. Again, you have to keep switching this kind of back and forth because it, you'll start pushing it around again. And you don't want to push it around, you want to get it off. And don't buy super duper coarse wool, something in the middle. I wouldn't buy, you know, triple or quadruple zero steel wool either. Um, I think this is a, a zero, which is pretty good. It's not it's somewhere in the middle uh, between, I think four is the coarsest and uh, four zero is the, uh, is the finest. I go somewhere in the middle. But again, not being very rough with the wood, just kind of pulling what's on it off. And you can see that's looking much, much better already. Much closer to that. Thing for these little guys, these little details and like this bit, which I already kind of started messing with. These little brushes, because they have this tiny little head on the front, are really great for these tiny little areas. You can kind of get up there and again, get a finger or get some steel wool, wrap around something like a screwdriver maybe or I don't know, toothpick, something you got like that, or you can even wrap it around the dental pick that I have and pick this out of the surface and get more, more out. And same thing with these little beads. As long as it's wet, you can just brush these along. Of course, I'm not trying to get everything out of every tiny little crevice um, because most antiques have darker parts in the crevice. They, that's how they look. And so I'm not trying to go crazy out of my way to get every single little drop of this old finish off here. I'm just gonna go back over it. But the idea is to make it fairly uniform. And that's obviously much more uniform. All right, guys. So this is the finished product. Uh, I will show you really quickly the last step here as well. So as you can see, it's looking pretty good. A lot better than that, uh, Horrible thick stuff. Sorry, it's not darker here. I just have a shadow because that's the way the light's facing right now. Also, you can see the uh, the wood in the legs is uh, something different. Uh, not quite sure what that is, uh, nor do I really want to guess at it. Um, but of course, that's the, uh, the sycamore right there on the skirting boards. And then the feet, I believe, themselves are sycamore. They have some more grain going on in there. But the legs themselves are something different. So that's kind of interesting, but you can see they cleaned up rather nicely. Uh, now I haven't got everything stripped quite yet. Um, there's still some work to go on these two legs. Um, definitely the back of this one and then the foot here needs some work. Uh, but I got to run. I got uh, some other things I got to do today. Some of the things have come up, so got to go attend to those things. Um, really quickly, I want to show you guys on this side what the flusher does, which is that second part. So let me set that up and I'll show you guys what that is. So guys, as you can see, there's some little drips and stuff and it's not, you know, not everything's fully off of this. So what I'm gonna do is take the flusher, which is that blue stuff, and we're gonna spray it on. So just like the, uh, 
the other stuff, you just spray it on. And all this do is doing is neutralizing the stripper. And uh, of course, when this dries, again, it does not raise the grain at all. So we just take a little scuff pad. This is the one I was using earlier. I typically like to fold it over so I get a better grip on it. And rub away. And this is removing all the last little bits of stripper and anything else that's on the wood. You know, get into the corner as best you can. I typically use uh, the other nylon, cleaner nylon brush to kind of go over this once again after I'm done with the scrub pad. Sorry if the angle's a little funny, guys. It's hard to walk and chew bubblegum, as they say, so it's kind of difficult to film and get this all in. It looks like I got a little bit of weirdness here. Um, I assume that'll just, uh, because the stripper's maybe been on there a bit long, so if I hit it with stripper again, I can get those out. So no concerns there. But as you can see, looks pretty good. Again, pretty happy with that. Um, so yeah, guys, that's uh, how I use my stripper for this varnish that I have on here. Of course, with paint, it is a little different. And at some point, I will go ahead and show you guys the a little paint demo on how I get all the paint off of all my pieces. So that's going to do it today for me and the desk re or restoration department. Um, we'll be back next week where I have shellac, we'll do refinishing, we'll do all the other fun stuff that brings the whole project together. Um, I might go ahead and just finish the last little bit of stripping off camera. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. Um, I mean, for 200 bucks, which is what I gave for it, you can't kind of beat it. It's really in good shape. They got the one little watermarks or the watermark stain on the top and that's it. It's really in great shape. And uh, yeah, let's just say I'm happy with my purchase. <laughs>